Hey guys, here to chat with you today a little bit about Gothic writing. Uh, this is the next unit we're going to go into after reading our Transcendentalists, Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. Um, and I really like Gothic writing. This is probably going to read one of my favorite short stories, uh, probably because of the way that it's written. And that's really what we're going to explore. Um, but remember that Gothic writing is all about sort of the weird stuff that goes on um, in the human mind. Um, it, it's it's all about like those supernatural feelings um, and the things that we just can't quite explain, but maybe pop up in the back of our our head. Uh, it's all very much like Thoreau and Emerson in the fact that they really want to focus on an individual. Like what are what are you doing? What are you feeling? What do you think is right? But it's not just like the empowering you feel good stuff. It's it's those deep dark stuff that you push way way back um, and try not to think about. Um, it's probably this. This is why Gothic writing is, is some of my favorites. Um, so we're going to read a, a short story called The Yellow Wallpaper. It's about an 11-page short story, so it's not um, super short. But similar to how we kind of took a look at and broke down Emerson's and Thoreau's ideas and their language um, almost line by line, we're going to do a similar thing um, to this piece, The Yellow Wallpaper. And we're going to take a look at not only how it's written, um, but how it's written and how that fits into maybe why it was written. Before we do that, we've got to talk about some first-person narration, because this story is written in the first person. Um, and to really sort of examine why this author would write it in the first person, we have to look at the pros and cons um, of first-person narration. Now, if you don't remember, first-person narration is just the writing of a story um, through a singular, singular view um, of a character. So you're getting one character's view, and it's like you are in their eyes. You see what they see. You feel what they feel. You think what they think. Um, so this is when the author is using words like I and we um, and my. We never get out of that first person view, um, at least in this short story. So the great things that are is that with this narration, we get awesome insight into that character's mind. We really get to experience what that character wants us to experience. We see their opinions, we see their emotions, we see their reactions to things going on around them. Um, it really gives us a strong sense of the personality of who this person is. We don't just see them doing things, we see them doing and thinking things. Problems with that are, that's the only view we get. We don't get anybody else um, in the story, uh, only their perspective on events, only their opinionated and subjective views on what happens in the story. And if you're only getting one person's view of the story, have you ever been lied to? Have you ever um, experienced a, an event and someone tells the story that you very much witnessed very, very differently? Um, some things that we have to be kind of careful with when we're reading strictly first-person narrators. So um, what we're going to do with this story is, is twofold. Number one, we have to explain how the first-person narration in the yellow wallpaper influences the overall purpose of the story. So that had, that's two parts. Number one, we've got to focus on, okay, what is the first person narration doing? Number two, what's the overall purpose of this story? So what's the story about? And how does the narration help tell that story? To help us do this, this is our overarching goal for reading this short story. Um, I've got a little document that I'm going to pass out or have the substitute pass out in class. And what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of track interesting things that we notice about this character. Since we only get one character's view, I kind of want you to track her development throughout this story. And I'm going to tell you that she changes. She goes through some big changes through over the course of the story. Um, and obviously, she's not going to just come out and say, like, hey, I'm different now. Um, but the way she thinks, the way she acts, the way she writes and tells you this story um, alters as we get on and we see different things happen. Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to find six direct lines, one, two, three, four, five, six, throughout the story. So don't just find all your quotes in the beginning. And don't find all your quotes in the end. You know, take one maybe from each page or every other page. Uh, and just an idea that you think is interesting, an idea that you really think shows this is an important fact to this character. I want you to jot it in here, and then I want you to think, what does that quote mean? What's, what are the, what's the meaning behind those words? For example, one of the ones that I picked out is one of the first lines in the story. Um, as an example. And this, this narrator says of her husband, he does not believe that I am sick. 
And so that's that's important for a number of reasons. When you read that, and that's line 14. That's not a lot into this story. Number one, this character's sick. What's wrong with her? I'm curious about this. Number two, why would her husband not believe that she's sick? Uh, that raises all sorts of red alarms in my mind, thinking about why is this husband a disrupting character? Why doesn't she have a family that loves her and believes her? Like that's That's disturbing to me. It makes me want to know more. So I think it's a very telling um, line for this person's character. So read the yellow wallpaper, um, and I want you to fill out this chart as you go through reading the yellow wallpaper. We'll probably take Thursday, Friday, and Monday uh, to read this paper. It'll take us a couple of days, and then we'll put it all together, and we'll write this paragraph at the end. So good luck. Rewatch this video if you need to remind yourself what first-person narration is. And I will catch you guys later.